Hello, stranieri. Come, let us take to the streets of Venice for a small stroll and catch the last dwindling sunlight and let me introduce you to the masters of Venice. No, no, not the dogue, nor the church, nor the patricians. Their powers began to fade as the rent shot down upon the city. Long before the sky opened, the old families, the Castellani, shipbuilders, and the Nicolottis, fishermen, began to lay the foundations of the true masters of these canals and alleyways through bloodshed and deceit. These two would create the first guilds, originally aimed at benefiting the tradesmen. It was an excuse to play out their familial rivalries. Though originally opposed to each other, the fast dwindling economy of Venice, before the world changed, an agreement was struck as they joined forces and took to the underworld of Venice to prosper out of sight, where more liberal methods could be applied. Look at these streets. You see the fisherman setting his stall for the day, the butcher dumping the remains of a carcass into the murky waters, a pickpocket running from guards across the rotting planks and uneven cobbles. They are all part of a much larger network spreading beneath the city, rooting itself into the very foundation and which rules the city from the shadows. The true masters of Venice, the guild. Although there have been many guilds in Venice, the Thieves Guild fast became the prominent secret society in the city. However, they quickly realized that in order to operate in the shadows, they would need to make deals with others. The first to be introduced into their ranks were the brothels. The House of Virtue, once a disparate collection of sex workers, now a full guild in its own right. It is led by an elected council of madams headed by the Lady Magdalene a democratically chosen position that has overall say on how all brothels in the city operate. The power of the House of Virtue grows daily as their activities permit them unparalleled access to all rungs of society. They buy and sell secrets, but they have a darker purpose within the guild. <laughs> Many a man and woman has met a grisly end when they are at their most vulnerable. The prevalence of the harlots throughout the city is both a blessing and a curse for the King of Thieves. Ah, <laughs> yes, of course, there's a hierarchy among the guild, from the humble pilferer up to the mighty Cappadocina. Each capo reports to one of five Prince of Thieves, one for each sestiere save for Canareggio. They are known by their neighborhood, addressed as Prince Castello, Prince Duro, and so forth. They each have their own specialties, be it robbery, smuggling, and but can always rely on their capos if needed. Above them all sits the King of Thieves, his identity known to no one. For how long he has held the position is a similar mystery. Some have even speculated that it may be, in fact, a queen. Others believe that just as the princes, it is a moniker that is passed from one individual to another. But a few speculate that the King of Thieves is over a hundred years old. There is even a rumor that the only way to ascend to the position is for one of the princes to steal the King of Thieves' coin purse. These secrets upon secrets weave a complicated web, and many doubt that one person could keep it all in their head, making it possible that it is multiple people, perhaps explaining the lack of a sixth prince if they all rotate in the position. The guild follows a strict code of conduct, and all members know and obey the three rules, or must face the wrath of the capos. Omerta, silence, the most important of the three rules, ensuring complete secrecy. Fedelta, fealty, demanding complete loyalty of all members to their superiors. Fraternita, business, making it so that all dealings and business must be authorized by the guild. The citizens of Venice have not stooped as low as the Vatican or the Church of Dagon. The magics of the rent is not to be meddled with but they have their own means to oppose the enemies of the city, the black lamps, shedding their comforting light and banishing the wicked. 
The lamps which were discovered during a raid when the city was beset by famine caused by disease-riddled food. They were found in a warehouse full of unaffected food, the light from the lamps keeping away the magical taint that rotted all else. Powered by the crystals created by the doctors, the black lamps are unpredictable and temperamental. But the select few who are chosen for the duty are picked not only for their combat prowess, but also their leadership and bravery. A black lamp on the street signifies safety and calm in the eye of the storm. Not only will the lamps dampen magical abilities, but the presence of a mighty black lamp will inspire any friendly fighter. One of the more disturbing members of the guild is Baba Yaga. She is a strange woman, appearing as a wrinkled hag, often dragging her colossal pestle and mortar with which to craft magical powers drawing from the blood of her victims. It is said that she made acquaintance of the King of Thieves and taught him many secrets of the city including knowledge concerning the activities of the Rashar, Strigoi, and the Doctors. Perhaps the most bizarre and recognizable natives of Venice are the members of the great and noble cult of the End of Days, as they dress as the popular character, Bulcinella. A masked, boisterous drunkard clad in a distinctive white suit and tall hat, always on the lookout for more alcohol, a fight, or both. It is unknown what the initial circumstances were around the founding of the self-proclaimed great and noble cult of the end of days, or why they chose Pulcinella as their champion, but the cult are very clear on their beliefs. The cult professes a madness linked to the rent in the sky. They claim that the heavens have opened up and that it truly is the end of the world. In light of their unimaginable insignificance when faced with the light of creation and destruction, there is nothing more left to do in life than live out the rest of their days with reckless abandon. It is easy to see why more and more citizens are turning to the noble cult, as living under the eye of the rent comes with a constant gnawing at one's senses, coupled with the city-wide spats of insomnia, drinking, fighting, Gambling and causing mayhem are what the cult does best. And giving in to the insanity of the situation, for many, is the only outlet. They usually gather in rowdy groups, swaggering and swearing their way around the city. The guild have found value in their service. They make for a strong distraction or a band of berserkers if pointed in the right direction. Although there is no overarching power structure in place, a Pulcinella that makes some act of particular disrepute may be named king for a day, bestowed a makeshift crown, and given lordly powers over a particular sect of the cult. Some Pulcinellas have secured for themselves the strangest of riding beasts a flock of ostriches that was unwittingly freed from the Venetian docks, upon which the drunken riders roam the city. Woe betide anyone meeting a sprinting ostrich with a lunatic riding it. No matter where the sun sits in the sky, or where in the city you set foot, the King of Thieves is always watching. His eyes and ears spread to the brothels and the taverns. You need not worry, my friend. They will protect you against the dark, against what lurks beneath the masks, for a price.